In lieu of the Toy Story 4 announcement, I thought it was only appropriate to go back and feud Toy Story 1 versus 2 versus 3. Now I have talked about each one of these at length in the past, but if there's one thing I'm known for, it's being redundant. Let's get started. Toy Story franchise has kept a very consistent cast. Woody and Buzz are the stars of all three pictures, and Tom Hanks and Tim Allen never miss a beat when voicing these characters. Pixar wisely removed some of the lamer characters in part three, such as Bo Peep. Jesse and Bullseye were given more spotlight, while Slink was more a background character by the third outing. Most likely because the toy dog's voice actor Jim Barney passed away. Toy Story 1 had a string of misfit toys, such as a baby doll head mounted to a spider body, and it also featured a young psychotic boy who I assume would grow up to be friends with Michael Myers by the name of Sid. I'm not sure I would call Sid the full-on villain of the picture or perhaps just more of a distraction as the overall story doesn't really revolve around him. Big Al and Lotso on the other hand do quite a bit of damage to our team. Side characters like the evil Zerg and that spectator are fun additions but they can't top Michael Keaton's Ken in part 3. His hilarious interactions with Barbie could easily spin off into their own film franchise. Don't get any ideas Pixar! They're not watching. That's just the beginning. The aliens, Buster, the army men, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, Rex, and countless others make these movies the wonderful experiences they continue to be. You got a friend in me. Toy Story 1 is the unique idea of an old loved toy that's not quite cherished as much anymore when a new one comes along. It's also the first time we're introduced to this world of toys Pixar has created and how they come to life when we're not watching. It's something that every kid, I think, at one point or another had running through the back of their head, you know, because kids are dumb as hell. Buzz Lightyear is that shiny new toy I was referring to, and once he enters the fray, what he finds, strange things are happening to him. So play off that song, strange things are happening to me. Oh. Buzz isn't perfect either, and it's the fact that he is a toy, an action figure, a child's plaything. Eventually, the two form their plastic bond and work together to overcome their obstacles. Toy Story 2 and 3 are not quite as original, but still manage to pull out some pretty cool takes on the subjects. In 2, we follow Woody as he's toy napped. That's a thing. And he's put on display with the rest of the Roundup gang. He's stripped of his branded boots and finds out his real backstory. The rest of the toys are on a rescue mission to save their missing leader. Toy Story 3 is a great last chapter to the series. Yes, I still consider it the end of a three-part story. The new film will most likely be the start of a brand new trilogy with the new owner. So I consider this old section done. It's, it's done, it's complete, it's perfect. So Pixar can go ahead and ruin the new franchise if they want, or maybe they'll give us three more fantastic flicks. In 3, Sunnyside Daycare is where it's at. Woody and his friends are mistakenly donated to the facility and have to break out. Lotso and company can't let that happen though. This ends in a very adult sequence where we see the toys almost meet their demise, but the claw stick rears its head again to save the day. Personally, I think 1 is the freshest story, and 3 gets a bit dark at times, but looks visually stunning. 2 keeps things fresh, but loses a bit of the charm of having Buzz being clueless. Bringing back a second one later felt forced. As much as I love Toy Story 2, I have a very big hang up with the intro. Buzz Lightyear we see playing a video game of himself. Now the graphics in game look the exact same as the rendered world Pixar's created. So that's essentially like me playing a video game of myself and the video game footage, the quality of the graphics are the exact same as the real life counterpart. I find that super freaking annoying. To infinity and beyond! If Buster the Dog could say one word about Toy Story 1's graphics, it would probably be rough. Yeah. We do puns here on Movie Feuds. Subscribe. Let's keep going. I saw the first film in theaters and I was amazed by how good they looked. It's incredible what time will do to perception. Now I look back at Toy Story 1 and I'm amazed at how bad it looks. Does that make it unwatchable? Not in the slightest. But there is something to say about pretty animation. It can make a mundane script seem all that better. <coughs> Frozen! <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Frozen. <coughs> Sorry. Frozen! The jump from 1 to 2 was impressive, but from 2 to 3 was night and day, starring Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz. The fabrics and materials on the cast are meticulously rendered. Woody no longer looks like a cracked out cowboy, but one of high class. 
Toy Story 1 does have some memorable locales that make up for the quality dip, such as the Pizza Planet segment and the final car chase. Toy Story 2 has even more memorable moments that take us across busy highways through Al's toy barn to the airplane escape. Now I do think Toy Story 3 is a great film, but the first half is noticeably stronger than the second for me. It has the best intro of the franchise where we see the toys playing with themselves. That sounded bad. There is also the daycare chaos, which I think is just hilarious. I know that 3 brought a lot of grown men and women to tears when the toys were about to be burned alive. It's a kids movie. I think they had it right at 2 though, with the abandonment of Jesse out in the field. All that said, Toy Story 3 has so much polish, it's hard not to crown it the king. I mean, I'm not gonna, but I can see why it's hard. Straight. Love him or hate him, Randy Newman is the go-to Toy Story composer. Curious to see if they bring him back in 4 or decide to start fresh. Perhaps to appeal to the kids, they should bring some dubstep into the mix. Joking. I am joking. Nothing tops You've Got a Friend in Me and Strange Things. I've seen all these films probably half a dozen times, and those two songs stand out above all else. Randy was back for the third, right? I mean, I don't even remember any songs. They really phoned it in that time. I think they just recorded him ordering dinner. You are a toy! When I heard they were making Toy Story 4, I said a resounding... Alright. Obviously the franchise is bankable, but if they have more stories to tell, I say bring it on. Again. We have a fantastic trilogy wrapped up, so let's see what Pixar can cook up this time. There are so many possibilities from here. As usual, I've given you my take on these films, and now it's your turn. Let me know your favorite Toy Story in the comments below, and make sure to vote for your winner. And if you like this idea, if you like the concept of feuds, head on over to Feud Nation if you're not watching this there already, and subscribe to my channel. I try to put out a new feud once a week, along with rants, game debates, and all sorts of other cool stuff. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds.